I'm standing in our newest backyard urban farm plot and we've got two caterpillar tunnels here. One I'm standing in and another one right next to it. And then next to it, we've got another three beds that don't have a tunnel because it's getting warm and we don't, we don't, we're not gonna need them much longer. But you will notice that I'm standing in a little monoculture. I'm standing amongst a bunch of Salanova lettuce. All this, this entire plot is all Salanova lettuce. And I wanted to talk today about monocultures and the importance of them in the proper context. So the thing that we often hear about monocultures, if you are interested in sustainable agriculture, is how bad monocultures are and nature doesn't like monocultures. And I agree with that. And I agree that monocultures on a large scale are generally speaking very harmful to the environment but also encourage one type of pest and that's where you run into problems. But in a small context, mini monocultures like this are actually very necessary in order to maintain consistent production and also keep your farm organized and your workflow consistent. And that's why we have this mini monoculture. So this isn't really a monoculture in the sense that there's lettuce as far as the eye can see. So if you drive up and down the Central Valley in Southern California, where the, the majority of monoculture that provides the United States and North America with most of its food is, you'll see miles and miles and miles of one particular crop. You know, you'll see, you'll drive down the highway and you'll see a mile of broccoli and you'll see a mile of corn or whatever it's gonna be. And those are different types of monocultures because in those monocultures, you're geographically covering a larger area and you're going to have these problems like, you know, one particular pest that will come in and deal with that crop or want that crop, that pest will multiply and then you gotta fight that pest with pesticides and all kinds of chemicals. And the problem in those types of contexts is there's really nothing else around them. It's just almost, it's desert essentially, and crops, and there's very little biodiversity. Whereas in a city, in, in an, even in a, in a suburban area like I'm in, just outside of this plot, we have trees, we have the neighbors' fruit trees and garden. We've got all kinds of diversity around us that actually provides some sort of ecological stability in this context. So this isn't really a monoculture in the traditional agriculture sense. It is a mini monoculture in that it's a block of crop. But if you were to look at, say, a larger market garden, look at Jean-Martin Fortier's newest farm, Les Fermes de Cap de Temps. If you haven't seen his videos on uh, that I do with him on his farm, click up here and check them out. But um, on his farm, he's got blocks. His whole farm is divided into 10 100 foot bed blocks. And they'll often plant out a block of one crop and then they'll rotate it to something else afterwards. But they plant it to a block of something so that it's, it's simple to manage. It's like, oh, you want lettuce? Okay, the lettuce is over there. You want radishes? Okay, the radishes are over there. And we're essentially doing the same thing here. And so this isn't going to be lettuce all season. It's lettuce right now. But as we start to harvest these groups of beds, which will be starting next week, those beds will be turned over and planted to something else. They won't be lettuce. They're usually, the, the way I rotate is by crop family or from top to root to top. So I don't follow the traditional certified organic crop rotation because one, I don't grow that many crops. But another, I'm, I'm limited on, on, on how I can do it and I'm not really planting on a 10 year cycle, which is which the uh, certified organic crop rotation is. So I don't have that much crop diversity so I can't rotate in that way. And, um, you know, I'm more focused on quick growing crops. So this being lettuce, next it could be radishes, it could be spinach, it could be arugula, it could be a variety of those things. But we're keeping all of this in these little monocultures because it makes things simple on our farm, just like I said, where if we need to harvest something, we can go to one place to get it. We don't have to go to four different plots to get a little bit of lettuce from each plot. That would be really inefficient. And when I started, believe me, I did it that way. I had little polycultures at every single plot and it was a logistical nightmare. And so uh, on our urban farm that's multi-locational, these little monocultures are even more important than they would be if you had a centralized farm. Because like say, say you're farming a half an acre or an acre, if you had to walk to two different places to get lettuce, that's not that big of a deal. But for us to have to get in on our bikes or, or in the van and go do multiple plots to get the same crop, it would be 
very logistically time consuming and that's what I had struggled with in the past. And so this basically keeps things simple for us and it's easy to visualize, which I like. So at this very moment, I'm actually out doing a little checkup. I usually do this once a week near the end of the week and I go and I look at what's going on at each plot and I make notes, I put them on my smartphone. Okay, these beds are gonna be ready by this time, these beds are gonna to need to be turned over by this time, and so on and so forth, so that when I'm regrouping on say Sunday night or early Monday morning, I can go through this list and go, okay, these beds can be turned over here, we're gonna plant these crops here, and so on and so forth. I can plan, I can do my weekly planning that way and have a visual perspective of what needs to be done. Because our farm isn't in one, one place, I can't just poke my head out the window and see what's in the ground. I have to actually go to each place, take photos, make notes about what it is so I have, I can essentially replicate that, that sort of experience. So I hope you guys have found that helpful. That is why we use little mini monocultures on our farm. People ask, so I thought I'd make a video about it. We'll see you later.